Hello students, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. Hari Mohan from Center for Medical Biotechnology, Maharshi Tehanan University, Rotak, Haryana. Today we are going to discuss about a module, Biomarkers for Animal Disease Diagnosis under paper Animal Cell Biotechnology. The main objectives of this module are to understand what are biomarkers, what are its different types, what are the property of an ideal biomarker, what are the applications of biomarker and what future improvement can be done in the biomarkers for disease diagnosis. Animals have been used since ancient time by human being for meat purpose, for milk purpose, for wool, for other purpose, other recreational purposes also. So whenever animals are infected with pathogens and they are diseased, they are not well, they will not perform their functions up to the maximum that that is a direct economical loss to human being so in order to their timely treatment their proper diagnosis is very important and for their proper diagnosis the human being must have with certain kind of markers which can be used to say yes the animal is suffering with this particular disease condition so we can define biomarker as an any biochemical, physiological or any other kind of change which happens in the diseased animal as compared to healthy animal. So this change in the diseased animal can be interpreted in different ways. So in different principles biomarker can be formulated. In this lecture we will discuss what are the important principles on which the biomarkers which are currently in use. Biomarkers can be used to test the presence of pathogen directly in the body fluid, blood, serum, saliva, sputum, fecal, fecal sample etc. So these biomarkers can be applied directly for diagnosis of any disease condition or intoxication or toxic intake by the animal. So human being is in search of an ideal biomarker and biomarker which have all the ideal property and don't have any kind of deficiency. What should be the property of an ideal biomarker? An ideal biomarker should produce reproducible results which can be reliable it should be less time consuming it should be cost effective the results of biomarker could be easily interpreted it should be time be effective and it should not altered with different environmental conditions it must be accurate sensitive and specific for the concerned disease and must be readily accessible for all kind of body fluids. So how it all started, how the quest or discovery of markers to differentiate healthy and diseased animal started. It was Wilhelm Runzen in 1895 who used X-rays to differentiate between healthy and diseased tissues. It was Burson and Yellow in 1959 who developed radio immunoassay, one of the most commonly used assay for estimation of insulin. It was Ingwell and Perlman in 1971 who developed ELISA, which have formed basis of most of the diagnostic tests available right now. It was in 1957 when Leland C. Clark demonstrated a biosensor for detecting glucose level in blood 
by using glucose enzyme electrode and this discovery has formed the basis of glucose sensors easily available in the market nowadays so these biomarkers have n number of applications they can be used to identify the disease they can be used to detect the causative agent of disease whether it is a bacteria or it's a virus fungus protozoa biosensors or these biomarkers can be used to detect toxins poisons taken by the animal in addition biomarkers can also be used to determine the extent of treatment efficiency so how much recovery has happened after giving a particular treatment can be ascertained by using a specific biomarker these biomarkers can also be used for determining potential outcome of disease means prognosis so we can determine the prognosis of disease based on the biomarkers and these biomarkers can also be used for quantification of disease condition so how severe is the disease condition or how rapidly the patient can improve from disease can be ascertained if we have a suitable biomarker for quantifying that particular disease condition so depending on the principle of detection six type of biomarkers have been identified first one is imaging based biomarkers second one biochemical based biomarkers third one immunoassay based biomarker fourth amplification based biomarker sensor based biomarker and array based biomarkers so all these biomarkers are based on different principle of detection and differentiation of healthy and diseased tissue first we will discuss imaging biomarker these biomarkers are based on the principle of imaging of body or living tissue so diagnosis is based on the change in image of particular organ or tissue in disease condition commonly used imaging biomarker are based on x ray ct scan electroencephalography magnetoencephalography mri or probe linked to a targeting moiety x ray have little penetration power they cannot penetrate hard tissues such as bones and cartilage on the other hand they can penetrate soft tissue like blood or muscles easily so there are difference in the texture of bone and muscle by using x ray we can determine whether there is any fracture in the bone or whether there is any change in the consistency of bone in case of hypocalcemia so x ray can be used in cases where we are concerned with bones the second technique that is electroencephalography is based on the detection of waves originated from brain so by comparing the electroencephalograph of healthy with the diseased the pattern of disease can be identified so electroencephalograph is very useful in diagnosis of depression alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease so depending on the electroencephalograph the physician can tell what kind of nervous tissue disorder the patient is suffering with next technique is mri mri stand for magnetic resonance imaging is a medical imaging technique used in radiology to form pictures of the anatomy and physiology of the body in both healthy as well as diseased condition mri scanner uses strong magnetic field radio waves and field gradient to generate images of organs in the body 
MRI does not involve X-ray and it distinguishes it from CT scan. While the hazards of X-rays are now well defined in most of the medical context, MRI still is superior than CT scan when X-ray usage is determined. MRI often may yield different diagnostic information compared to CT scan. There are also risks associated with MRI. If a patient have certain kind of implants or certain bony implants in the joints, so it is possible that the damage may happen. So in these patients, MRI is contraindicated. Next technique is ultrasound is very commonly used nowadays to diagnose reproductive organ disorder. It is also used to determine the texture of inner organ, liver, spleen, kidney, etc. Ultrasound is based on the principle of ultrasonic waves. These ultrasonic waves are sound waves which have frequency higher than audible range of human being, that is 20 megahertz. So all the waves above 20 megahertz up to 1 gigahertz can be used for ultrasonography. By mean of ultrasonography, a image of tendon, muscle, joints, vessels, internal organs can be taken and it can be compared with the healthy to determine whether there is any defect or not. Next technique which is based on imaging is probe link imaging technique. This technique enables the visualization of cellular function and the follow of molecular process in the living organism without disturbing the processes. The multiple and numerous potential of this field are applicable to the diagnosis of disease such as cancer, neurological and cardiovascular disease. This technique also contributes to improving the treatment of these disorders by optimizing preclinical and clinical tests of new medication. Instrumentation used for X-ray. So here you can see the texture of muscle and bone are different and any kind of fracture can be easily observed in a x-ray. The output of EEG which is also known as electroencephalograph exhibits different kind of waves and these waves can be compared with a healthy to de determine whether there is any deviation or not. In MRI there is a narrow tube in which patient is placed and this tube contains strong magnetic field. Ultrasound gives blue, gray and white dots. So depending on the consistency of tissue, the blue dots or white dots will appear. So by comparing with healthy, we can say whether it is a pathological condition or everything is normal. This image indicate in vivo imaging. So in this case, certain kind of fluorescent dye is injected in the body and it has demarcated the specific locations inside the body. So in the living organism, we can image the whole body using this technique. So second type is biochemical biomarker. Whenever something unnatural happens with the animal, whenever a pathogen infects the animal or whenever it is affected by a toxin, certain kind of change happens in the physiology and the biochemical parameters are disturbed. This disturbance in the biochemical parameter can be estimated or this change in the biochemical parameters can be compared with the healthy parameters. So this formed the principle of biochemical biomarkers. In the disease condition, what kind of protein increases in concentration and 
what kind of protein decreases in concentration so that can be estimated and it will give a direct indication what kind of disease it may be a very simple example is in case of diabetes mellitus there is high rise in glucose level so whenever there is high rise in the concentration of glucose it may be a direct indication that the animal may be suffering with certain kind of diabetes disease so these biomarkers they directly indicate toward a condition and this based on the change in the biochemical composition of the body fluids so any kind of body fluid whether it is serum whether it's blood or whether it's tears saliva sputum so any kind of body fluid can be used for estimation of these biochemical biomarkers so example of biochemical biomarkers means the biomarkers in different biochemical and physiological conditions are cathepsin d which is associated with rheumatic arthritis so its concentration increases in rheumatic arthritis in case of diabetes there is high concentration of glucose in blood in case of pancreatitis amylase and lipase enzyme can be used as biomarker in case of inflammatory responses acute phase protein such as c reactive protein and amyloid protein they increases in concentration in case of hepatocellular damage the concentration of sgpt sgot gdh increases when we want to test liver synthesis prothrombin can be used as a biomarker in case of cardiac disease where we want to ascertain whether there is a, a heart damage or not cardiac troponin can be used as a biomarker and for ascertaining the function of kidney blood urea nitrogen and creatinine can be used as biomarker third type is immuno assay based biomarkers so these biomarkers are based on a principle that antigen will interact with antibody and this antigen in antibody interaction can be detected in any way either by radioactive substances or by color development or by any other method so binding of antigen with antibody can be detected in this case anything either antigen can be fixed or antibody can be fixed uh, or and the uh, complementary thing can be detected in the sample so this is a simple principle how this immuno assay based biomarker work so suppose in any disease condition special kind of protein appear which is not present in the healthy animal so detection of that particular protein by elisa by western blot is a direct indication that the animal is suffering with this particular kind of disease so these biomarkers which are based on antigen antibody interaction they are highly sensitive highly specific less time consuming and they give more reliable and reproducible results radio immuno assay is oldest technique among all immuno assay technique radio immuno assay is very sensitive in vitro assay technique used to measure concentration of antigen for example hormone level in blood by use of antibodies although this ria technique is very sensitive and extremely specific it requires face light instrument it requires special precaution and licensing since radioactive substance are used so these radioactive substance should be disposed of properly this radio immuno assay is like a competitive elisa where a known quantity of antigen is radio labeled with a radioactive material like iodine 125 and compete with the antigen of biological fluid for limited quantity of antibody the radioactivity is measured by either gamma or beta counter depending on the radioactive source so radio amino assay used for detecting allergy is also known as rast test that stands for radio allergosorbent test is example 
of RIA which is used for detecting allergens in case of allergy. This test known as ELISA serves as an important biomarker and it is used in many disease condition to diagnose the stage of disease. It is based on a simple principle of antigen antibody interaction. So either antigen is fixed or antibody is immobilized on the wall of ELISA plate and this counterpart is allowed to react. So either antigen or antibody can be detected in blood, serum or plasma depending on the test requirement and visualization can be done after proper washing. The coloring agent is added. If the color appears, it indicates positive ELISA test and there are several variant of ELISA like indirect ELISA, sandwich ELISA, competitive ELISA, sport ELISA, LE sport, lateral flow. This lateral flow assay are also known as hand held assay and these lateral flow assays they are very simple to perform and even a layman common man can perform these tests by just observing the positive and negative result on the instruction page. So this pregnancy diagnosis kit is an important example of littered flow assay. Electrochemiluminescence is a biomarker which is used for detecting the antigen in a cell. This electrochemical luminescence detector antibody is directly labeled with the chemiluminescent label. It is just like ELISA. These magnetic beads are coated with capture antibody. The sample containing antigen are added to the mixture of capture antibody coated paramagnetic bead and a RU conjugated detector antibody. So here in the picture you can see that after incubation captures and washes the magnetic bead measures the electrochemi luminescence. So that is like a signal which is used to differentiate healthy and disease tissue and can be used as suitable biomarker. Fluorescent dye based immunoassay. As the name indicates, these assays are based on tagging with the fluorescent dye. So these assays are sandwich type assays which are similar to sandwich ELISA. The only difference is how to detect it. Here the antibodies are coated with fluorescent dye such as lanthanide chelates, europium, samarium, terbium, dysprosium. So these fluorescent dyes they can be detected after proper washing. PCR or amplification based biomarkers they are serving as very important mode of diagnosis as they are said to detect only one copy of DNA. So if very low concentration of bacteria, virus, fungus, parasites are present in the sample then also by this method diagnosis can be done. It is based on the principle of amplification of specific part of gene using two primers and a heat stable DNA polymerase. Most commonly TAC DNA polymerase is used in PCR. It can be used for confirming the positive agent of disease. It can also be used for determining what type of strain it is. PCR is also used for diagnosis of genetic disorders. The advantage of PCR is it is highly sensitive, rapid, inexpensive and can detect very very small amount of genetic material. So test for mycobacterium bovis, brucella abortus, gluten virus, salmonella, legionella, listeria, virotoxin producing E. coli has been standardized by PCR. When PCR is carried out with sequencing or restriction, profiling, 
RAPD, RFLP, they can be used as a biomarker. When PCR is carried out with sequencing or with restriction, enzyme digestion, RAPD, RFLP, DNA fingerprinting can also be used to identify disease caused by mutation. So this PCR is a highly sensitive technique and used very commonly nowadays to differentiate between the disease and the healthy animal. LAMP assay or LAMP based biomarker, LAMP stands for loop mediated isothermal amplification. It is very much similar to PCR technique, but it is single tube technique for amplification of DNA and it don't require expensive machine like PCR machine. It can be easily performed in the water bath because it requires a constant temperature of 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. So beauty of this test is it can be performed at field level also. It can be performed within 15 to 60 minutes. And the results can be visualized by necktie. So here we don't need to run gel. We don't need to run agro gel. That is the case in PCR. So here the results can be visualized by next eye either by change in turbidity or photometry or fluorimetry. So this test can be very handy and it can be used directly at the field level. The only thing is it need to be synthesized for different pathogens. According to IUPAC biosensor or sensor based biomarker are device that uses biochemical reaction mediated by isolated enzymes organelles or whole cells to detect the effect of chemical compound by electrical thermal or optical signals so these biosensors are making headlines nowadays because they are very handy and even a layman can use biosensors. So biosensors can be of you know, many kinds such as optical sensor, electrochemical sensor, immunosensor. So these sensors are based on different principles. For example, optical sensor is based on the detection of presence or absence of light in a specific condition. Electrochemical change in the electrochemistry, change in the current, change in the voltage when the binding of ligand with the receptor takes place. Immunosensor is based on the binding of antigen with antibody and the change that happen can be can be signaled as change in the electrical parameter. So these biosensors based on different principles can be used for rapid and sensitive detection of pathogen in the given biological sample. Biomarker based on sensor, also biosensor generally exploit different property of biological sample. So binding of analyte with the biomolecule result in certain kind of change and that change is detected as a signal by the signal transducers and signal amplifiers. So basically we can say there are three main parts of a biosensor and these are biological recognition unit, signal transduction unit and signal processing unit. So the analytes in the sample will bind to the biological recognition unit. It can be enzyme, antibody, nucleic acid, cell, tissue, organelle. So this binding of analyte with the biomolecule result in certain kind of change and this change is detected by signal transducer which is further amplified and it is detected as electrical signal. Successful biosensors have been prepared for glucose, for diabetic ketoacidosis, for cancer, for thrombin. So now more and more biosensors are coming in market and these have made the life easy for the patients for rapid detection of analyte in the 
blood samples glucose meter is the example of electrochemical sensor where a certain amount of blood is taken through capillary action the blood react with the enzyme electrode containing glucose oxidase or glucose dehydrogenase enzyme attached on media so this enzyme is deoxidized with an excess of mediator reagent like ferricyanide ion at the electrode to generate electric current so this electric current is detected as concentration of glucose in the blood so it is the most successful biosensor used currently and very easily available in the commercial market array based biomarker so array based biomarkers are important in cases where the disease is multifactorial so we can say in diagnosis of multifactorial disease array based biosensor serves the purpose suitably what array means array is an orderly arrangement of samples where matching of a known and unknown dna rna or protein sample is done based on the base pairing so atgc simple base pairing serves the principle of array so what is done in array a number of probes are coated on the same chip and that chip can be used for screening of thousands of disease at a time this coated samples known as probes are immobilized on the solid spot and sample is incubated after processing and that lead to complementary binding this complementary binding initiate a signal and that signal after amplification can be detected and even the concentration can be measured there are different types of microarray and main types are microarray expression analysis in this type the mrna is converted into cdna and the level of expression of mrna can be judged by estimating the concentration of cdna in the sample second microarray for identification of dna based microorganism means by complementary base pairing of probe with the genome of bacteria we can identify the specific bacteria causing a disease third microarray for mutation analysis so in this type of microarray genomic dna is used and it can be very useful for detecting mutation at certain position in the genomic dna then microarray based on protein can be used for examining a number of proteins in the sample so a number of proteins under two different conditions one healthy and second diseased can be used and their expression profile the presence or absence can be compared and that presence or absence or difference of any protein between diseased and healthy condition may serve as a suitable biomarker for a particular condition so till date many biosensors by bio, many biomarkers have been standardized so how to develop how to discover and develop new biomarkers as we know biomarkers are certain parameters which are present in specific condition and absent in the healthy or other condition so we have to have two different kind of population one is diseased and second is healthy so we must have control we must have diseased animals if we want to develop biomarker for a specific disease second thing is what kind of technique we will use with the advent in the omics techniques that is proteomics transcriptomics metabolomics genomics technique so we have a number of tools that can be applied for searching the difference between healthy and disease sample so suppose we get a a protein which is present in disease condition but absent in the healthy animal so that need to be confirmed that need to be 
again confirm that yes the results are true and this confirmation can be done by either PCR or sequencing or array bloating immunoassay biochemical analysis or chromatography so that need to be confirmed that yes this biomarker is a reliable thing and it can be reproduced again and again and it is giving specific result for a specific disease and once it is standardized the biomarker need to be validated under field condition so when the samples from field are used actually to detect the pathogen or to de detect the disease that will be the actual test of biomarker and once it is confirmed that yes it is successful in detecting the disease condition under field level also then it is a useful thing it can be uh, sent for, to market for commercialization so we can con conclude the module by saying that in the changing scenario the disease conditions are getting more and more complex they are more linked to the environment what kind of feed is given to animal what kind of water the animal is drinking that is correlated directly to what kind of disease it is getting so for solving the puzzle of the disease diagnosis its ideal biomarker should be at place with the advancement in technology we have transcriptomics where we can study up regulation of genes or down regulation of genes in certain conditions so this transcriptomics technique has given us a strong tool by which we can just compare the the expression or transcription level of two different group and we can come out with something that yes it can be a potent biomarker in addition metabolomic approach can be used very successfully because metabolomics search for the metabolites expressed under certain situation so when we compare metabolomics data of diseased with healthy it is very much possible that we may come up with certain kind of molecule that is present in one condition but absent in other other techniques like proteomics genomics also assist in metabolomics and transcriptomics so here we can see we can say that for getting maximum profit from animals for maximum utilizing them we must have a rapid arrangement for the disease diagnosis in the animals and this can be only happen when we have specific biomarker for each disease condition it is also possible that we may develop biomarkers for high yielding animals so we can select only high yielding animals and cull the inferior animals so using biomarkers for increasing productivity of animals using biomarkers for specific diagnosis of disease will definitely help in increasing the profitability of the dairy business and it will be definitely a great help for the farmers and the farm managers in nutshell we can say that biomarkers are going to play a major role in the future disease diagnosis and management practices in the dairy industry thank you very much